Good morning. This video is for, um, well, I do want to go over week 10 agenda and also go over 4.2, the math notes. Okay. So uh, real quick, if you open week 10 agenda for, uh, for this week, uh, you'll see that project one is due. Let me see if I can present it here so that we can go over this together. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Project one's due this Sunday, and what what I have in plan is to record about like 15, 20 minute video each day, Monday through Thursday, going over the, the project. Uh, because even though we went over the project description before midterm, um, we, we had a couple absences and also just, just to kind of do them together, just like how we do the Excel homework all the time together, right? So um, come back and check Canvas. Mm, every day or just after Thursday, I'll have everything ready for you on Canvas under Project One Gradebook link, summation link, okay? Um, so please take this quiz for today's attendance grade. Um, uh, Google Form link, let's do this one together. I wonder if I can click on this here. I have to get out of it. Um, where are you? Uh, I'll go back to the agenda page. Oh, there is a anonymous llama here. Anyways, uh, let's complete this Google form together for today's attendance grade. What is your name? Susan. And please don't submit this more than once because I got a couple of people submitting this multiple times and... Um, I, I guess it's okay. I, I'm just going to delete your second attempt. All right, what are two math lab homework due this Sunday? Math lab, my math lab homework 4.2 and 4.3. You did 4.1 last week. So just those two are due this week. Uh, which Excel homework is due this Sunday? The budget. I just recorded the video for Excel homework 4.3 budget and posted it on Canvas. It's a little bit longer. Uh, took about 25 minutes in the video. Uh, but start early. I just have one Excel homework due this weekend because you have project one grade book. This due this Sunday. Project true or false? Project one grade book should be submitted on Canvas by March 29th, Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Yes, that's true. I'm doing these quick attendance checks just because I want to make sure that you know what's due this every week um, since I don't get to see you in classes anymore, right? All right. Um, how many paragraphs are required for the reflection section of Project One Gradebook? You need to type up two reflection paragraphs, okay? And please read the rubrics. I'm probably going to record a short video on the reflection part, just kind of going over the descriptions on Thursday because that's the last part. Um, but if you are already there, I already have somebody submitting this uh Project One Gradebook. So, you know, the sooner you submit, I can give you feedback if anything is incorrect or um, I want you to fix. I'll, we, we can just go back and forth until you get the grade you want, but we want to finish that process by the Sunday. We want to. All right, fill in the blank. Project One Gradebook is worth blank percent of your course grade. What percent? 15 percent of your course grade. Let's submit it. Um, your response has been recorded and I think I made this into like a little quiz format so you can view the score. Um, hello, I want to view the score. Click, 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 click. It's not letting me see the score. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but maybe after stopping this video, I'll go back and um, see what I can do to, to let you see. But well, that's weird. But maybe I can go into no no I'll just I'll just fix that part later. But now um on Wednesday I want you to come back and do something similar. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I should probably go over the rest of this slides. Um, so we just did that attendance quiz together, and I wanna go over the list of assignments that are due this Sunday. Um, first one, my math lab homework four point two. The purpose of this video is for me to teach you um, all the math that you need to complete this homework 4.2. Wednesday, you'll see another one for 4.3. You already have the Excel homework 4.3 Google slide link and video link. So choose which one you want to use to complete that Excel homework. And Project One Gradebook, you do have a Google slide already. Um, 
Remember, this is something we went over before spring break, before you took the midterm. My plan is to come back here and kind of, you know, this one is, let me see, oh, wow, 40 slides. Um, maybe I'll do like first 10 slides today, um, 11th or 20 on Tuesday, 21. You see, I want to divide this up and have short videos um, of you and I kind of doing this project together. Um, I'll give you suggestions and things like that. So that, because, you know, I usually get a lot of people coming to office hour to get help on project one because it's 15% of your grade. You want to do a good job on it. But um, since we have to make the office hour all virtual online and it's still we can do a Zoom uh, video conference if you want to do that to talk about project one grade book. But I just wanted to provide, you know, as much resource as possible to everybody. So. If you need more help on Project One Gradebook, uh, you are expecting to get about four short videos coming up and then they'll be posted on Canvas for you. All right, I keep closing the slides. Okay, so that's really it. We have four things due this weekend, two regular math homework, one Excel homework, and that one project. And if you feel like you're gonna need more time because you're just getting used to this new format of the, you know, how, how all the classes went online, all of a sudden, if you feel like you're gonna need more time, just please email me and let me know, okay? And we can work things out. All right, um, you will come back on Wednesday and you will have another attendance quiz um, soon, but I said, like I said, it's coming soon. I'll have a link ready for you by this Wednesday, okay? But hopefully you just took that one, the 23rd for the Monday one with me just now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that you guys can see your uh, answer for this. But as long as you complete this, I will make sure to enter 100% for today's classwork grade um, and mark you present, okay? Now, let me do what I wanted to do in this video. I want to go over lesson 4.2 with you. And this is what I did. Um, and it looks a little different because I'm working on my iPad. But if you're on your, um, on your computer, you do want to go to our course canvas, go to modules. And under week 10, you will find everything. Um, so you did some work on week 9, but... Under week 10, um, that's the agenda that we just went over together. My math lab homework 4.2. So no one submitted it just yet because, you know, it's Monday. Uh, but after this video, you should be able to work on this homework, okay? Now, I'll do download this 4.2 blank note. If you would like to take notes on this, you can print this out and go through this with me. Or if you just want to watch and take some notes on a piece of paper, that's also okay. But I have this posted for you on Canvas. Let's see, it's page one, two, um, three, four. And I used to assign this last page as a classwork, classwork sedative. But since you have a lot of work to do this weekend, we're just going to skip this last page, page five. Oh, this was a... This, um, we're going to skip page five. I'm just going to go over page one through four and ask you to complete my math lab homework 4.2. Okay? All righty. Okay, I downloaded this on my, let me, let me go ahead and go over this note with you, okay? Notability, here we go. So, um, section 4.2, we're talking about part-to-part -part ratios. Uh, let's go over the first objective first, understand part-to-part -part ratio. What does that mean? Um, got about one example, one, two, three, well, about three different examples to go over. And then the second objective is to evaluate concentrations. So for that evaluating concentration, I have four and five, two examples with you. Like I said, we will we'll skip this one. Let me see if I can write. Oh, that's too thick. My little boy was playing to draw pictures on this iPad last night. So he probably wanted to make it really, really. Okay, so we're going to skip this last page because you have plenty of work to do already. Uh, but let me go through example one, two, well, pages one, two, three, four with you in this video, okay? And they're very similar to the homework problem that you're going to do. All right, number one, compute the total cost per year, total cost per year, of the following pair of expenses, ra expenses round to the nearest percent as needed. Ooh, I may need to go grab my calculator, guys. All right, hold on. 
Sorry, I was getting up. My screen kind of rotated. All right, I'm walking to grab my calculator, my new office, my dining room. I hope you're doing well. Where's my calculator? Well, I might have to use the calculator on my iPad then. Well, that's okay. All right. Uh, all right, let's read A. Diana spends $10 on lottery tickets every week and spends $250 per month on food. Okay, so on annual basis, the money spent on lottery ticket is blank percent of the money spent, uh, spent to buy food. Let's do the lottery ticket first. Let me circle this. $10 on lottery ticket every week. So remember, we have um, 52 weeks in a, a year, right? So if she's spending $10 on um, this lottery ticket every week, she is spending, um, she is spending, I'll just make a little um, label here, lottery ticket expense okay that's gonna be ten dollars times 52 so what we got is that she's spending 520 dollars a year on these lottery tickets now let's go ahead and do the other one the food um and she spends $250 per month on food. So food expense, let me write that down. Food expense. That's going to be $250 times what number? Per month, right? So we're going to multiply that by 12. I found my scientific calculator. It was right next to me. All right, so I'm typing 250 times 12, and that number came out to be 30, not 30, I'm sorry, $3,000. So we found these two expenses. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to write the money spent on lottery ticket as a percent of the money spent on buying food, okay? So this is what you're going to do. I, I need more room, but um, um, let me highlight or circle these two numbers that I got right here, okay? Ooh, that's too big. Sorry that I have to kind of adjust in the first couple problems. So you have the number 520, right? And you also have the number 3000. What they said is they wanted you to write the money spent on lottery ticket as a percent of money spent on food. So remember, we, we talked about how whatever that comes after all is going to be the bottom of the fraction or the denominator. So this is how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write this as, I'll write it up here, okay? Sorry, I was out of room. $520 out of, that's for the food, right? 500 and, uh, I'm sorry, that was for the lottery tickets, divided by 3,000. But notice I want to make this into a percent. So I'm going to multiply this by 100. All right, um, fortunately, you can see me typing this in my calculator, but I know you you can do that on your own too. So I'm dividing 520 by 3000 and I'm multiplying that by 100. And I got 17.3 repeating. Uh, they wanted you to round to the nearest percent as needed. So we're gonna go ahead and just say 17. Okay, that's rounded to the nearest percent, no decimal. So the answer is going to be 17%, okay? On an annual basis, the money spent on lottery ticket is 17% of the money spent uh, to buy food. Now, guys, that was one example, but B, C, and D are really all similar, so all similar. So if you are okay, um, you can skip a couple, you know, but I'm going to go through these. I'm going to go over B, C, and D, but if you are okay, you know, the beauty of video is you can just skip forward if you want to, but let me go over um, all of these examples just in case you want to see more, okay? All right, let's take a look at Michael. Michael buys four lottery tickets. Ooh, he buys four lottery tickets each week. 
at a cost of three dollars each oh dear okay how many is it bought okay so i'm gonna go ahead and write down his expense for lottery ticket lottery ticket expense okay so he's buying four of them at three dollars so look i'm gonna say three dollars times what four but each week right and we know there are 52 weeks in a year so how much is he spending in a year let me multiply three times four times 52 so every week he's spending twelve dollars but if you do 12 times 52, uh, Michael is spending $624 on lottery tickets every year or, or, or this year. Okay, um, let's go ahead and find the other one. What else is he buying? He's spending ooh, $700 per year on his textbook. Okay, so textbook expense... The good thing is he's just spending $700 per year, right? So no reason for us to multiply this by anything. Well, I guess we can multiply this by one, but that's how much he spends in a year. So let's go ahead and write, um, or read the, the second sentence and see how we should divide. On an annual basis, the money spent on lottery ticket is, so the money spent on the lottery ticket, this money is blank percent of the money spent on buying textbook. So blank percent of that $700. So let's set up the uh, fraction and we'll multiply. So let's see. Ooh, I'm having too much fun with this iPad. Um, 624, divide this by what number? 700. And you're going to multiply this by 100 to make this into a percent. Okay, so let me do that on my calculator here. 624 divided by 700. And let me do times 100. And that came out to be 89.14. 89.14. If I round this to the nearest, hundred, uh, nearest percent, that's going to be 89%. Yay. So I'll do write down 89 right there. Now I just showed you two examples. If you are okay, skip forward a little bit. But you can keep on watching. All right. Rose spent $8.00 every week on cigarette eight dollars every week on cigarette cigarette expense they're expensive huh um so that's gonna be eight dollars times every week so 52 to make this entire year's so if I do that, I'll get 8 times 52 equals $416 for the cigarette expense. And he also spent some money on dry cleaning. Um, dry cleaning expense. $21 a month. So what will you multiply this 21 by? 12, because we have 12 months in a year. 21 times 12 is $252. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and find the money spent on cigarette is blank percent of the money spent on dry cleaning. So let's go ahead and divide. Um, this 416 by 252, 416 divided by 252, don't forget to multiply that by 100, okay, let me do that on my calculator, 416 divided by 252 times 100, that comes out to be, whoa, it's big, 165%, 165%. So he's spending more money on cigarettes than dry cleaning. 165% of the money spent on dry cleaning. All right, the very last one. Let's look at Liam's cell phone bill. Liam's phone bill is $82 per month. $82 per month. 
So that's going to be cell phone expense. Eighty two times per month, guys. What? Twelve. Eighty two times twelve is nine hundred and eighty four dollars. OK, now what's next? And now he's spending the other one is two hundred and forty five dollar per year on student health insurance. All right. Health. Insurance. It's going to be, well, simply 245 because it's per year. I don't have to multiply this by anything. So he's spending so much more money on cell phone expense. Um, the money spent on his cell phone bill is blank percent of the money spent on student health insurance. So let's divide and multiply. 984, 984 divided by 245. Multiply this by 100. 984 divided by 245 times 100 is 400. Okay, 401.6. Now, I didn't have to round up on the, uh, the, the first three problems, but I'm going to have to round this up to 402. Hopefully, you're typing these answers uh, on your calculator to see why I'm rounding this way. It was it was because 401.632, da, 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 da. Because this 6 was greater than 5, I just rounded it up. 403, and you know how my math lab is with rounding. They're very, you know, they're going to mark it wrong if you don't round it correctly. But that was enough. I think you got this. Let me show you. We just did four problems on um, this type where we computed the total cost per year and kind of did the comparison. Um, let's go on to example two. Oh, a store is having a clearance sale on winter gear due to global warming with everything marked down 85%. Okay, the boots you have been waiting to buy are now $52. Fill in the table to find their original price and the markdown in dollar, dollars. Okay, now the homework I know that um, you get also kind of comes in with this table. Um, so I'll, I think I'll just kind of do this using this table, okay? Um, real quick, take a look at the last row for me. Let me highlight this very last row. Um, $85, um, the original price, $100. So what I'm just highlighting, this part right here. Um, if the markdown is 85 dollars um and the original price is hundred dollars how much is the new price the new price will be hundred dollars minus 85 dollar right that's a great deal so how much is the new price if the original coat is uh, original winter gear is $100 and we get that $85 discount. Uh, the new price of this winter gear will be only $15, right? So go right, go ahead and write down that 15 over here. Okay. Now here's the thing though, we don't, we can't really use the same method to fill out uh, um, this cell and that cell. Or I keep calling it cell because we're so used to using Excel, right? But anyways, um, what we have to do is now use proportion. And I'm going to go ahead and um, highlight or box four boxes. And you'll notice it. You'll notice it. Take a look. Ooh. These four quantities that I'm boxing right here. These four quantities. Notice that we have three numbers, right? We just don't know what this is. So I'm going to call this X. I'm going to call this X, okay? If that is X, wouldn't we be able to set up a proportion? So let me go ahead and the proportion, okay? 85 over, I'm sorry, X over 85 equals, what's the other fraction going to be? 52 over 15. 52 over 15. Let us cross multiply, okay? If I cross multiply... I will get 15x equals 
85 times 52. That's going to be 15x equals 85 times 52 is 4,420. What will you do to both sides now? Yes, I know you whispered. Divide both sides by 15. Then x is equal to 2, wow, 294 dollars and 67 cents. Let me write that down on this cell where we just temporarily called x. So the number is going to be 294 dollars and 67 cents. So that's how much the discount is. I'm getting a crazy good deal because um, I'm only going to pay $52 with the discount of $294.67. So how would you find the original price? Take a look. Um, notice how if you add 85 plus 15, if you add these two together, you get 100, right? Same rule applies. If you add the markdown price plus the new price, you will get the original price. So if you want to get the original no. price, you will simply add the markdown price, the, the, that first part, to the new price, and you will get the original price. So do 294.67. That's how much the discount is. Plus $52. How much is this original winter gear? And that answer is $346.67. Um, they wanted you to fill out the table. So both of these were necessary for you to write down. So $346.67. All right. I want to just kind of try another way of checking this answer, okay? Um, when I go shopping and, you know, these stores say, oh, it's 85% sale. What I do is, oh, that means I'm only going to pay 15% of the original price. So check this out for me. Do the original price of six, four, $346.67 plus 15% of 15 um, price of that original price. Um, not, remember how we rounded it a little bit? So we may get something that is slightly different from $52 exact, but if I'm using my, I'm using my scientific calculators to find this, and what we got is $52 and 0005, and you know, because of the rounding, remember we rounded the 67 from like 6666 repeating, so, and you see how that matches the new price that we were given in the beginning so that's how you can do this table problem where they give you part and part and the whole okay all right let's continue i may stop the video after objective one and start another one for objective two the concentration problems these are taking a little bit longer time maybe because i'm going too slow hopefully this is okay with you oh you hear my cat all right, let's see what's this. Oh, the annual carbon dioxide CO2 emissions in 2012 by countries given by given in the table. They want you to complete part A through D below. CO2 emissions in 2012 million metric tons. Oh, okay. China and United States and India and Russia, Japan. Oh, here's South Korea. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, all right, what do they want? Part one, they want you to compare the the part to part ratio of south korea to the united states and scale the second quantity to 100 so they want the number of united states to be 100 um so let me just kind of make a little proportion um and you know i'm, I'm it's going to be south korea over united states right And I'm going to get the numbers first. South Korea number was 657.1, 657.1. And the United States, what was it? Is 5,270.4. Now, here's the second part. So they wanted you to scale the second quantity to 100. 
so what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this equal to another fraction but put the second quantity to be a hundred and we don't know what the numerator has to be so i'm gonna go ahead and just put x there now once we figure out what x is we will be able to say oh that's my ratio okay so you cross multiply 5270.4x is equal to 657.1 times 100. So that's going to be 5270.4x equals 6571 0. I move two to the right, so that's got to be it. Now, let me divide both sides by this 5270.4, okay? Oh, let me make this go up a little bit. 5270.4. So, if I do that, I'll get what X is. Okay, I'm using my scientific calculator again. Mm, 52 divide that by that number um x has to be 12 point now 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 i have to be careful how did they want you to round i don't i really didn't see the rounding rule here but i was kind of looking ahead and they mentioned round to one decimal places as needed so i'll just say this is 12.5 because guys it was 12.467, a uh, 46, so I just rounded that up, okay? So the ratio is going to be, the answer that we want to give them is this, 12.5 over 100. That's going to be my answer for part A. Okay, let's interpret this part-to-part -part ratio of South Korea to the United States. Um, see, the CO2 emissions of South Korea were 12.5% of the total amount um, the United States emitted in 2000, 2012. And we get to say that because, you see, we set the second quantity to 100 in part A, so we get to use the top number as the percentage, right? So that's great. Now one more. Compute the part to whole. Oh, now this one's a little different, guys. Part to whole. Now this one, they don't want you to do part to part. They want you to do part to whole ratio of China to the world. China to the world. Because you know that they're one of the bigger, biggest countries. So um, the CO2 emission of China, how much is that going to be of the total amount? Let's see. Um, I need the number for China. I need the number for China. And I also need the number for the whole world. Um, China is that number right here. And the world is going to be that number right there. All right, let me zoom out real quick, and then I'll write this down and zoom back in, okay? I'll write China, the numerator is going to be 8106.4 divided by 32,310.3. Okay, guys, hold on a second. I'm going to go ahead and scale this to a... Another fraction or another ratio that has the second quantity that the world to have 100. And let me call the numerator x. Now I'm ready to solve using cross product, right? All right, let's try that. So multiply these two numbers or these two quantities. You'll get 32,310.3x equals... Multiply that number by 100. What's that going to be? 810640. All right, I multiplied that by 100. And now let's divide both sides by 32, 310.3. 32, 310.3. So we'll get, we're about to get an answer. X equals. All right, I need a calculator. Uh -huh. Divided by 32,310.3. Okay, so what you will get is 
point zero eight nine uh but dot 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 but remember whoopsie hold on let me close this my son's teacher emailed what's going on with the public schools now right all right um they want you to round to the to the one decimal place so i'm gonna go ahead and say my answer is gonna be 25 point one over 100 for part a and if you, you're wondering why do i have to put one over 100 they wanted the the scale um the second quantity to be 100 they wanted you to have a ratio so ratio i wrote it as a fraction the numerator is 25.1 and the denominator is 100 all right we're gonna just number that we just found um, and make an interpretation the co2 emissions of china were oh my goodness uh 25.1 percent of the the world total emission in uh, 2012 like about a quarter hmm. and you know i think they're like what how many countries are 150 something or 159 oh um, okay anyways so guys i think that's a good uh point for me to stop um i still need to go over objective two evaluating the concentration example four and five but i don't know not many people want to watch video that's longer than like 30 minutes so i'm gonna stop the video here and i will come back and record another one where i go over the second objective for this week okay Alrighty, come back and watch the second part please see you later